What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In front of me here is my Segway P100S and I've owned this unit for roughly around four weeks now. I've learned a lot about the things I like about it, things I don't like about it, as well as some of its quirks. And in this video, I wanna deep dive into all those things and talk about it and be completely unbiased. And as an FYI, Segway is not sponsoring this video. I paid for it using my own money. So with that said, Let's get right into it. I'm sure by now you watched my first impression video where I talked a little bit about the Segway P100S. I did the unboxing and then I went out for my first ever ride. So now that I've gotten to know the scooter a lot, I think the first thing I wanna start out with is first talk about some of its specs because the second part of this video is gonna be us going on the road and talking a little bit more about it. So at that point, everything I'm gonna talk about now is gonna make a lot more sense. For starters, this is a rear wheel drive scooter and the rear wheel has 650 watts. The scooter has three different speeds. You get an eco mode, which does somewhere around 11 miles an hour. You get a drive mode that does somewhere around 25 miles an hour. And then you have a sport mode that can do anywhere between 25 to 30 miles an hour. All three of those speeds have been confirmed and in my test ride a little later on you're going to notice that those speeds are easily achievable. Besides that Segway claims that this does a 61 mile range. As for the battery it's in here I'm not sure exactly what chemistry it is but it is a 23 amp hour battery which is absolutely massive. If you take a look at the side you really can't tell that that big of a battery lives underneath there but it's a huge battery and 23 amp hours is a lot. Besides that, you get disc brakes in the front as well as in the rear. The electronic brakes also assist in slowing you down as well. And it also has regenerative braking, sending power back directly to the battery. Now, one of the major advantages of the Segway P100S over its smaller brethren, the P65 unit, is that this has dual suspension. The suspension works really well, but as far as the suspension is concerned, we're gonna talk more about that once we get out on the road. And two last things, I want to talk about. The front and rear tires are 10.5 inch self-healing tires. I'm not exactly sure how the self-healing part works. All I know is that they're tubeless and they're pretty meaty. And finally, some of you may know this and some of you may not, but there is a USB port so this way you can plug in a phone. In front of the unit, there are two sections here where you can put a phone holder that's sold directly from Segway. So if you wanted to, you can hook it up here and then plug in your phone to the USB port and you can charge it while you're on the go. It's something I'm probably not gonna be using, but if I ever needed to charge my phone, it's nice that I can plug it in directly into here. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention it's daylight right now, but the lights are extremely bright. The brightest lights I've ever seen for a scooter. Turn signals in the front, turn signals in the rear, and then you have two lights that are on each side on the front. But for now, the last thing I wanna demonstrate before we actually get on the road is how to fold this unit because it's nice that it's not like its larger big brother, the GT2 or the GT1. Uh, the form factor on this is a lot more portable than those units, so it's easy to be transported back and forth. And not exactly compact like you would find in a four or $500 scooter, but still compact enough that you can put it in your trunk if you needed to. Right. There's a little folding mechanism. You simply pull it up and pull away from your body, and then the handlebar simply goes down. I like the fact that there's a little hidden compartment here where if you push on the inside, this part of the handlebar simply clips into place, and now this becomes portable and you can take it anywhere you want. Now I do have to mention this unit is 72 pounds. It's a very, very heavy scooter. Now in the Segway community, there's a little confusion about how to start this unit up. When you first receive this unit, as I mentioned in my first video, you have to make sure that it charges for at least three seconds. And then afterwards, it works with the NFC card. However, when all that is finished and you start riding it and you have it connected to your phone, at that point, you have two ways to unlock the device. The first way is using the NFC card. Using the NFC card, really simple. There's a little NFC logo right here put it on the logo and the unit starts right up. Way number two is by turning on the unit, you give it a soft press and then it starts making beeping sounds. At that point, you get your app and once your app is open, you connect the app directly to the device and then once the device is connected, there's a little lock. You click on the locking button, the beeping stops and now it's connected directly to your phone. So if you forget your NFC card, using your phone is the other way of opening the device. A few moments later, all right, guys, we are ready to hit the road. Let's turn this baby on with the NFC card. There she is. One thing about the unit that I'm still not sure about is that every single time you turn it on and you ride the scooter and stop it, it says that it goes into park. What exactly is park? Like, what is the function of it besides just standing still? That's something I'm never gonna find out about, I guess. Unless somebody knows, leave a comment down below. 
Most of the time, I'm riding the scooter in drive mode. I don't put it into sport mode. Drive mode is perfect for city commuting because I live in the city and I mostly ride the scooter to go to the supermarket, make small little errands here and there if I need to go to CVS or whatever. Besides that, I use it to go to the gym. So throughout the entire day, although I have a brand new car sitting in the garage, I have a 2022 BMW X3. Believe it or not, I ride the scooter more than the BMW. I'm not even kidding about that. <laughs> One day I think I'm going to make a video about the comparison of mileage that I put on this scooter versus my BMW. Anyway, on the road, as I mentioned before, I ride this thing mostly in drive mode. In drive mode, picks up speed really quickly. Doing 25 miles an hour right now and I have about 70% battery life left. On the left hand side there are three buttons. The biggest one being the cruise control and the other function of the bigger button is to turn on and off the lights or put it into auto mode. The red button which is the biggest one is going to be your honk. As you can hear it's pretty loud and I kind of find it obnoxious. The button on the left hand side is your turn signal indicators. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but Segway recently came out with a new firmware for the P100S and maybe for other Segway devices, I'm not really sure. But one of the updates that they added was for the turn signals. Before, it would only blink five seconds or five times and then it would turn off. But now, while you're standing at a stoplight, you can hold either left or right and it will continuously blink. But as soon as you take your finger off, the blinking stops. I still don't think it's a perfect solution. But for now, it'll do. I gotta be honest though, doing 25 miles an hour on a scooter is pretty scary fast. Because the cars on my left side, they gotta be doing at least 40 miles an hour. So to be going on the side of the road, even though this is considered a bike lane, I still don't consider it very safe. So any faster than this, and it's really scary. But that being said, the Segway P100S feels very, very solid. This thing is built like an absolute tank. There's no rattles, there's no squeaks. You hardly hear anything besides the sound of the wind. The GT2, which is the big brother of the Segway P100S, comes with traction control or stability control. I forgot which one it is, but I do find myself skidding a lot using the brakes, even though I'm giving them a light touch. So stopping power is definitely great. Unfortunately, the tires aren't grippy enough to stop you. And as I mentioned before, once you stop, it will make a beeping sound, letting you know that it's in park mode. But as soon as you hold down the brakes, the park mode disengages. And I'm still not quite sure what the park mode is actually for, besides letting you know that the scooter stopped. So in this type of situation, what I will do is I will put it into sport mode because I want off the line acceleration. And that's where you really take advantage of sport mode. Let's see if we can go in front of the line here and avoid some of these cars. And before you guys ask, filtering is allowed in California. If I have to take a guess, eco mode is about 250 watts. Drive mode is about 500 watts. And then when you put it into sport mode, it goes all the way up to 600 watts, allowing you to use the full capacity. Quite honestly, guys, 650 watts is way more than enough. If you're using this for weekend hooligan action, you're probably buying the wrong scooter because uh, I think uh, you're looking for something that has a lot more power than 650. As I mentioned previously, most of the time when I ride the scooter, I'm usually in drive mode. I think full 650 watts is just a bit much because the throttle is too touchy and 30 miles an hour on regular streets, I feel unsafe. And as an FYI, I ride super bikes. I have another channel where I ride motorcycles and I go on the racetrack and I ride as fast as humanly possible. But when I ride a scooter, I don't feel like going that fast because I feel unsafe. It's quite ironic, isn't it? So go ahead and check it out if you guys are interested. What's up, bro? You want to race? Uh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to put it into sport mode. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> let's go, bro. Me and you. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to be going down a hill at the moment. But when we come back up, we're going to be testing out the P100S power. 
and see how it does up this hill. You probably watched my other video with the High Boy S2 Max. I went up this hill and it did quite all right. I think it went up about 10 miles an hour up this steep hill. So I'm really curious what 650 watts will do up this hill. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. He oh, no. Right there. He's, getting, he's creeping up. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that one's sick. We're feeding him. We're feeding him. <laughs> this guy has a sense of humor. I like him. Cool guy. So, yeah, this is the steep hill I was talking about. Now, if I let it go, is it going to slow me down automatically with dead braking or not? Let's find out. 26, 27, 28. 29, whoa. Surprisingly, regen braking doesn't slow you down when you're going down a hill. And uh, this felt way more secure and solid than the High Boy S2 Max going down because with that one, I also went about 28, 29 miles an hour, but that was really sketch. This one handled it quite well because of the front and rear suspension, as well as the beefier front and rear tires. This is where that left turn signal comes in handy when you hold it down, letting the guy behind me know that I'm making a left turn signal. But that also means that he has to look all the way down to see them. All right, let's go. All right, guys, we are in a location where there's some really bumpy areas, and I brought you guys here on purpose just to talk a little bit about the front and rear suspension. I've ridden this exact road on my High Boy S2 Max and it is bone jarring. For people who wear glasses and go on bumpy roads, your nose takes a beating, I'll tell you that. And I wear sunglasses as well as glasses. So this road with front and rear suspension is actually not bad. And it's doing a very, very good job of handling the road surface. I think without the suspension, it would be far more uncomfortable. Let's take it on some grass and see how it does. Pretty smooth. It's not really that bumpy. Now while we're here, let's talk a little bit about the styling of this unit. In my humble opinion, I purchased the scooter not only because it's a Segway unit, but because it looks absolutely the part. When you look at other scooters, it looks like they just took a bunch of parts and put it together. and with this scooter, it actually looks like they took the time to design every single aspect of it. And I think Segway did a fantastic job of making sure that this thing looks absolute quality and very futuristic in my opinion. I've gotten a lot of people come up to me and ask me about the scooter. And when you're riding this thing at night, it really has a presence. The rear of the unit looks a lot bigger simply because of those two lights that come right here. There are little projection lights that are in the back of the unit and they project light and it's a Segway on it. I wish that was customizable, but it's perfect the way it is and I don't mind it that it's not customizable. Uh, the handlebar of the unit, the deck itself, everything looks very, very high quality. And I think that this thing will last many, many years to come. And I love the way it's designed. But with that being said, I think now we're ready to go back up that hill. So this so we can test out and see if it struggles or not. Unfortunately, the suspension is not adjustable. So you really can't change the spring rate or make it stiffer or any lighter. If I had the choice, I would make the suspension a little bit lighter simply because I don't weigh that much. Uh, it's, uh, it's a one size fits all type of approach. And uh, I think that's why the GT2 costs a lot more money, giving you the ability to customize things. All right, guys, now we are in full sport mode going up this hill. Is it going to be able to accelerate this quickly on a very steep hill? I'm just as curious as you are. If we can maintain anywhere between 15 to 20 miles an hour going up a steep, really steep hill, I'll be very impressed. 12 miles an hour, 13, 15, 16, 17 miles an hour. Yeah, and this is pretty steep. Let me pull over real quick before we go up this hill, because this is the steepest hill in all of San Diego, in my opinion, and find out what the battery level is on the Segway P100S. All right, so just connected, and I'm at 52%, and I've done a total of 151.8 miles on the Segway. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So, at 52% battery life in sport mode, let's see how fast we can go on this thing. 7, 8... 10, 12, 13, 15, wow, 15, 14, 15, 
15, 15 miles an hour. We're going anywhere between 14 and 15. I think that's all she's got. The high boy that went up the same hill has a 500 watt motor. And I believe that had a 13 amp hour battery. And that did about 10 miles an hour at 70% battery life. So it's quite impressive that this does about 14, 15 miles with 50% battery life. And that concludes our hill test guys. That's pretty impressive that with 50% battery life, we did about 15 miles an hour. Still in sport mode, going up a slight hill, doing 24 miles an hour. All right, guys, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on the Segway P100S $2,000 scooter. Is it worth it or not? As you saw in my video, it climbs up steep hills with 50% battery life at 14, 15 miles an hour. So with its 650 watt motor, it did a fantastic job and it's very, very impressive. Besides that, its claimed top speed of 30 miles an hour is pinpoint accurate. 30 miles an hour feels a lot more faster and I think it's simply because you're standing up as opposed to sitting down. If the tires were 15 inches or bigger, then I think it would feel less scary, but I'm not saying at all that it feels unstable. It's just that I personally feel safer when I'm anywhere between 20 to 25 miles an hour while I'm on the road. As far as the front and rear suspension is concerned, it does a really good job of handling the bumps, but don't think to yourself that it's like riding on a bed of clouds. It's still a very bumpy ride. If it didn't have the suspension, it would be a lot more uncomfortable. Now let's talk about the parts availability for this device. One thing that's missing from Segway's website, I wish it had, but they don't is the availability of the front and rear tire. I'm not sure what Segway was thinking, but nearly every part on this device can be changed except for the front and rear tire. So if uh, the corporate executives of Segway are watching, please make sure to add this to the parts availability list. It'll make my life, including other people's lives, a lot easier considering that someone like myself rides this thing an average of five to six miles per day. So as you can tell, the miles quickly add up and you will eventually need new tires. If you're anyone who does anywhere between five to 10 miles per day, the scooter is absolutely perfect. It's a joy to ride and at a price point of $2,000, I think you're getting a lot for your money because it has futuristic looks, very beefy suspension, 60 mile range, as well as 30 miles an hour. And in this day and age, I think that's a lot for the money that you pay, especially from a company like Segway. Now I plan to do a lot of videos with the Segway P100S. So if you guys are interested, please make sure to subscribe. There will be another video in the future where I will talk about five things that I absolutely hate about my Segway P100S because it's a nearly perfect product, but there are some flaws and I wanna to talk to you guys about that. So stay tuned for a future episode and until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Take care, ciao for now.